We've got a lot to talk about today. This is our last show that is live before 4th of July. Tomorrow we're going to have a best of show that's put together. So today we're going to want to talk to you, the public. You know, we've said many times on this show, Alex says it all the time, you are the resistance. Well, there's a lot that should be resisted right now that the government is doing. And so I want to hear from you and find out exactly what your plans are to do either tomorrow or in the near future. Pick a scandal. Do something about it. Do something locally. Everything doesn't come out of just Washington. There's a lot that can be done locally. We've got stories here about people working in Florida to get rid of red light cameras. I mean, you can start at that low a level. Work your way up. It doesn't have to start at the top. But we have so many things that are going on in Washington and have been going on in Washington. And I think when we look at the Declaration of Independence, we see an echo of what is going on today. Much of this, much of what they were complaining about, the multiplication of offices to harass the people and eat out their substance. And they go down and they list these things. We're going to talk about that. The different things that the government is doing now, essentially the same things they did then. The difference is that we have technology today that makes what the government does much more dangerous, much more comprehensive, much more difficult even to detect. And we have a government that believes that it should do everything in secret. You know, secret courts were struck down after the Star Chamber, and even the Fifth Amendment is a reaction to the Star Chamber that they had in England. It was a memory of people. They understood how tyranny worked. We have become complacent. We don't believe that it can happen here, but we have an article that we're going to be going over that we have intelligence people who have talked about exactly what is happening now, the patterns that are established. People who were with the East German Stasi say they would love to have this kind of technology at their hands in those days. And we got people who've been warning about it for 40 years, there's an article we got coming up. But in this segment, I want to talk about first, before we get on to domestic news, What's going on in Egypt? And we've got a article up on Infowars.com from Paul Joseph Watson. Egyptian protesters are blaming Obama for the Morsi dictatorship. And it's pretty amazing when you look at, look at this. If you've got the monitor there, if you go to our website, you need to look at the collection of pictures of what people are holding up there. Uh, I'll read some of these out for the radio audience here. Wake up, America. Obama backs up a fascist regi regime in Egypt. The next one, Obama supports terrorism. Hey, uh, Rachel Maddow, you know, that's uh, the Egyptian people who are living under this understand what's going on. They disagree with you. You know, you criticized Alex Jones because he talked about how the American government, not just Obama, but Bush as well, established the Mujahideen, which turned into Al-Qaeda, how we're arming them, how we're providing for their financial benefits with the uh, poppy seed trade in Afghanistan. That's how they fund their terrorism. And we've been conducting terrorism abroad quite a bit. And so when they fund these dictatorships, when they, when they fund al-Qaeda to take over Libya, yeah, Obama is supporting terrorism for sure. He's doing it in Syria as well. The next one, Obama supports dictator Morsi. Uh, we know what you did last summer. Go home to Obama Island. <laughs> it's really amazing. There's even a picture here uh, comparing how Morsi's logo looks exactly like Obama's 08 logo. And then there's a long sign here from one guy. He says, from Tahir Square to the U.S. media and the Muslim Brotherhood. Obama, you jerk. Muslim brothers are killing Egyptians, so how come they can guarantee, they can guarantee you the security of Israel? Exactly. All we are doing with our foreign policy is fomenting war and death all over the globe. We're not providing security or safety for anybody. We're going to be right back, so stay tuned. It's an exciting show today. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. Now our questions are going to be for you really today. We want to know what you're going to do to resist tyranny. You know, our, our country celebrates the Declaration of Independence tomorrow. 
We have fireworks that celebrate how we fought for that independence, how we won that independence. It's not given to us. You know, it was Jefferson writing to Lafayette. He said, we are not to expect to be translated from a state of despotism to a state of liberty on a feather bed. Something has to be done about that. Now, we all enjoy the time that we have with our families, a vacation time. While you're doing that, you need to be thinking about what you're going to do about the kinds of abuses of power, the abuses of authority that we see increasing and accelerating and multiplying out of Washington. And so we're going to talk to you about that. We know that there are some people who have some plans. Uh, we've got a press release that we're going to be talking about restoring the Fourth Amendment. Uh, it's going to be rallies all over the country on the 4th of July to reestablish the Fourth Amendment. There are going to be some rallies coming up in the middle of July talking about uh, jobs and how that's going to be impacted by the proposed immigration bill. So a lot of people have picked issues. Uh, the one about uh, protecting the 4th on the 4th of July is a really good one. That's coming up tomorrow. So we're going to talk about that. You can uh, see where that's going to be happening in your area. If you're involved with that, we want you to let us know about that. But one of the things that has bothered me in the past on the 4th of July, and it's why we're not going to be going to any 4th of July fireworks with my family. Last time we went, it was just such an oppressive police state. I mean, the dissonance there about getting together on a day to celebrate your freedom and independence, and instead you're surrounded by an army of cops. We went to a very small town to see a fireworks display. And we just could not believe the number of cop cars that were there. I didn't know that small town had that many cop cars. And it wasn't just cops. They had other people in kind of quasi-military uniforms with guns on. And they were just walking around like, a, you know, as Alex would say, you know, sticking their, uh, their jaws out, you know, sticking out their chest. They were just looking for something to do, watching all of us to see if we were going to violate some rule of theirs. It was just pathetic. I've, I've never seen anything like it. I don't want to go to a public celebration like that because of that kind of attitude. Out of Ohio, we've got an article on InfoWars from Anthony Gucciardi. An Ohio city is banning fireworks, drinks, drinks, grills, and enacts a mandatory bag search for the 4th of July. And listen to this. The following rules will be in effect at Lakewood Park on the 4th of July. All generators, propane, and gas-fueled grills are prohibited. All tents and shelters are prohibited. You know how dangerous tents and shelters are. Police will be conducting searches of bags and coolers for reasons of public safety. No alcoholic beverages are permitted at any time throughout the year. No personal fireworks. This includes novelty fireworks like sparklers. No dogs or pets of any kind. And the skate park, tennis courts, and basketball courts will be closed. So, you know, I mean, it's basically, is there anything you can do there? Uh, and I'm sure they will have an army of police bugging their eyes out at everybody there to see if they're going to violate any rules. And, you know, here in, in Texas, around Austin, they've announced that it's going to be a no-refusal weekend. Yes, to celebrate our freedoms, the police are going to be pulling people over and demanding to draw blood from you. And if you don't, they'll just get brutal, and they'll do it anyway. They're not going to take a refusal, so... If you insist on your Fourth Amendment rights and you say that you're going to refuse that, uh, just understand that these are people. What we have here is really a standing army, isn't it? We have a standing army of cops. You know, sheriffs are elected, but the police chiefs are not elected. And they are there to enforce policy. No matter how arbitrary that policy is, no matter how capricious it is enforced, they're going to do that. And we've got a couple of stories here today. As a matter of fact, we've got a video coming up here. This happened just this last weekend, and it was in Charlotte, North Carolina. And the military was conducting a, an unannounced drill, as they're doing more and more frequently here. Drilling in the U.S. cities. Why? Because that's, they practice where they're actually going to be doing things, if, as, as, one, uh, as one military uh, expert who was questioned about why they're doing all these military drills in the city, he said, he said, well, if you're going to conduct operations in the mountains, you practice in the mountains. If you're going to do it at the beach, you practice at the beach. And he just left it there, right? And of course, they're not doing this for urban warfare in other countries because I don't think they expect that they're going to have the cooperation and support of the police when they invade, let's say, Syria or Iran. So this is clearly something that they're setting up for domestic use. They're buying massive amounts of ammunition. 
And here in Ohio, uh, I'm sorry, in Charlotte, they have a military drill going, and this fellow starts to film it. And take a look at this video. He sees a couple of helicopters that are coming down, so he starts filming it. And we've reduced this. So if you go to see this video, it's probably about uh, 15, 16 minutes. We've reduced it about a minute and a half. And they're about to land here. The helicopters are coming down. And once they land, troops are going to jump out, uh, take positions around the helicopter, and conduct this drill. And then he's got a uh, officer who comes over to him at, at about the 13-minute point, which we're going to skip to. And this officer has been telling him that he needs to leave because it's not safe. And he says, I have a right to be here. It's a public area. Here it is. It's coming up. You'll be, oh, there's a couple more helicopters still up in the air. So there's several helicopters on the ground, still more helicopters in the air. It's a fairly large. And I've asked him here he is. He's talking now. I'm breaking no laws. All right, you just go have to go. I'm breaking no laws. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trespassing at this time. Yeah, I am not. This is public owned property, Sir. and I am not trespassing. Sir, look, I'm asking you to leave. Now, here's a cop. I, and this what is a law cop. am I violating by standing Sir, here? Trespassing. This is public property. This is city property. This is city property owned by the public, and I'm breaking no laws. All right, well, now, I'm telling you to leave. Why is that? I'm telling you to leave. And give me a reason for that. 13 o'clock, 13 o'clock. 25 down here. Give me a reason that you're asking. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Now, you now he takes him Are down. You? He's not going to give him a reason. The only reason he has is... You ask me what? We leave public property? It is. This place is good for a minute now for our use. It's not private. You did not, you did not take my property. So, what happens with this video as it goes on, the cop roughs him up and they... And he takes his camera out, he throws it on the ground, evidently trying to break it so they couldn't have a record of what had just happened. And you can hear the guy say, are you serious? Why are you throwing my camera on the ground? And you can just see the camera staring at the sky at that point. But basically what was happening in that video is first the military guy comes over and says, you've got to leave the area. He says, it's a public area. And the military guy says, well, uh, you're, it's, it's dangerous for you to be here. Well, here's my question. If it's dangerous for civilians, to, oh, civilians, if it's dangerous for the public to be in a public area like that because of what the military is doing, then why is the military doing that? Why don't they practice somewhere where they are not going to be endangering the public in the first place? The public has every much a right to be there, as does the military. But, of course, this is a man in uniform. And in the USA today, you're supposed to do anything anyone in a uniform tells you to do. And if you don't, they're going to get rough with you. So he doesn't listen to the military guy. The military guy calls a cop over, and basically the cop says, you have to leave. He says, why? He says, you're in, a, you're, uh, in the way of this. And, and they talk about it being a He says, this is a public area. You've got to go. He goes, it's a public area. I have a right to be here. And so then he just starts throwing him around and arresting him. We see this happening over and over again. And this is something that's probably, hopefully this guy will sue them for false arrest. We see this happening in many, many jurisdictions, and the amount of money that is going out from different city locations is just amazing because they never punish the police. Even when they do something really egregious, we had the video yesterday that I'm sure you saw that um, the fellow who was filming uh, the cops doing an exercise, and once he complied with them, they came over and got rough with him, and then the dog that he had put, that he was walking with him, that jumped out of the car to protect him, and the cop just shoots the dog. It's just absolutely amazing what they do. And, the, and if you see the video, the cop is not being threatened at all by the dog. But um, we have other cases here that just broke out. We have a Zerbi family just won $6.5 million because they had a son who was killed because he had a nozzle in his hand. That's right. The neighbors thought that he had a pistol, but he had a garden hose nozzle in his hand. The police came up and started giving him orders. He didn't immediately comply because he wasn't sure what they were asking. And uh, they just opened fire because they thought that he was pointing that nozzle uh, at them. And they killed him. And the family won $6.5 million award. The mother says, the money doesn't bring my son back, which is all we wanted. And it also, the judgment also does not take these cops who did that 
out of service. And the police department is absolutely unrepentant on it. This is what the, uh, the Long Beach police chief, Jim McDonald, said. He was in court for the verdict, and he was disappointed, disappointed by the decision. You know, they had every right to shoot somebody who pointed a garden hose nozzle at them. Their actions, we believe, were an immediate defense of their life, talking about the, off, the uh, cops. He said, that's the way we judge, based on the circumstances known to them at the time. You see, if the police feel at all threatened, they feel that they can shoot you, they're slaves. They can do anything to you. We had the uh, case just um, uh, about a week, week and a half ago, about the young lady who was autistic, 11-year-old girl that was autistic, found wandering down the highway, and she was tasered by a police officer. Now, hang on, because at the bottom of the hour, we're going to have a great rant from Gerald Salenti about the state of America, and you don't want to miss that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro-Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. Before we get started, I want to give a plug here to one of our sponsors who helps keep this operation going, and that's Infidel Body Armor. InfidelBodyArmor.com stops hundreds of rounds from AK-47, M4, 3060, 308, and more. And it is available at InfidelBodyArmor.com. That's 888-608-6605. Infidel Body Armor. That stuff is solid. I mean, it takes keeps taking the hits. Now, we were just talking before the break about a police judgment where they got six and a half million dollars for the wrongful death of a man who is merely holding a garden nozzle. We have another one coming out of uh, Hawthorne Police Department paid one million dollars to settle a lawsuit in which it was alleged that a man was kicked in the face while handcuffed, then falsely prosecuted along with his wife to cover up the brutality. So we've got a lot of police brutality, a lot of uh, things that the police are doing that they never get uh, disciplined for, they never get thrown out. But we have a report here from a good cop who got up at a city council meeting and talked about a, an upcoming legislation that they were proposing. And listen to what he has to say. His name is Aaron Weiss, an Iraq combat vet and a law enforcement officer. Hello, my name is Aaron Weiss and I live in the town of Poughkeepsie. I'm a combat veteran of Iraq, and I'm also a law enforcement officer. I attended the Public Safety Committee's last meeting in regards to this resolution, but I didn't say anything because I wanted to hear what everyone else had to say. And I heard some shocking things from some people and some legislators. They said that it took a lot of courage to pass this SAFE Act. Apparently, my definition of courage differs from yours. You see, if it was really so courageous a bill and it took so much courage to pass it, then why was it done in the middle of the night when no one could see it or read it? That's not courage. That's a mafia-style sit-down to divvy up what's good for the bosses. Courage is taking the right and true course of action, not the politically expedient one. And anyone who is proud of this law must also be proud of the Patriot Act, the TSA, imprisoning Japanese citizens in World War II, since all these actions were spurred on by emotional fear and rammed through in the name of public safety. Another issue is the insistence of certain people to stand on the graves of dead children and challenge those that disagree to say it to the parents' faces. Well, I, for one, will pick up that gauntlet. First off, why is dead children your battle cry? You didn't say anything about the hundreds of Chicago children being killed, and for some reason you only scream when it happens to wealthy white ones. And yes, I will say to anyone's face, my right is more important than your dead because I fought for it firsthand. I washed the blood of my friends out of, the, out of my Humvee, and I picked up their mangled bodies, and I fought day in and day out. I did more things that you people can't imagine. So yeah, my right trumps your dead. I earned it in blood. I gave up a lot for this country, including my youth, and better men than me gave up a whole lot more so that all you, myself included, could enjoy the rights that are guaranteed to us in our Constitution and Bill of Rights. 
And we didn't go through all that to come back home and watch the surrender of what we fought for happen based on the demented actions of a couple madmen. So in closing, I would like to address specifically the legislators we all know who are going to vote against this resolution. I understand you will vote against this resolution based on some misguided sense of the public good. However, as a law enforcement officer, I'm curious to know about your true resolve. Since voting to take away someone's rights is totally different than being asked to enforce it, I want you to consider this. If you support the SAFE Act so wholeheartedly, are you willing to stand with law enforcement members and lead from the front to enforcement? And what I mean by that is if a constituent of yours feels still alienated by this law in the manner in which it was passed, that they refuse to comply with it, are you willing to stack up on their front door and go in first? I bet if a clause was in this bill that required you, the elected leadership, our elected leaders, to go in the door first, I bet you would not be so steadfast. That's right. I'm listening to this. What you don't hear at the very end of that video is that the, uh, the people he was addressing there, the government officials who are proposing this gun confiscation plan, they wanted everybody to stop clapping. They, they really wanted to quiet that down pretty quickly. But he brings up a point. He fought. Others fought for our liberties. They put their lives on the line. And yet we're told that all, we have to, that all they have to do today is just scare us with a possibility that we might not be safe if they don't take this away from us or that away from us or deny us of our Fourth Amendment protections or put their hands all over our bodies. We're told that they have to do that so that we can be safe. I'm reminded of that series that you see on uh, YouTube, How It Should Have Ended. I guess that's how it should have ended in World War II. I guess the, they should, should have had a parade of all of Hitler's weapons. And we should have all looked at that and said, wow, you know, for our safety, I guess we ought to just give up and throw down and uh, let him take over the country because, you know, we could all get hurt. That wasn't the way this country has run before. But people are all too willing to do that. Stick around. We're going to hear what Gerald Salenti thinks about America in the next section. Coming right up. Stay tuned. Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is, is an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states and the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while 
until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the New World Order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.